Welcome to the National Snow Show Extra with Outside and Active and In the Snow. My name is Rob Stewart and I am here with ski instructor Roran Smith. Hey, hey Roran. How are you doing? Good to yeah, see you. Good, you too. You too. You know, we bumped into each other quite a lot recently. Um, you and I was in one of your, I went to one of your talks. Yeah, uh, I know. That was, that was good either, come along. Well, they're really interesting. Um, let's, start, let's start there with the content that you're doing in these talks because yeah. I think it's very unique yeah. and it's really different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's all we're all we're doing is we've we've sort of taken an ingredient out of our ski courses, um, the th and it's an ingredient part. It's like um, it's called the Ski Technique Lab. So we're getting people at the show, pretty much all the skiing general public of the UK, to come through a testing system, and the way that they do the test, it's like the biomechanics of skiing, and these are the bits that we can't usually fix on a five day course. It would take about three weeks of physiological work to fix it, but the fixes are really easy. So yeah. we actually designed this, you know, in a way. It's like ski technique hacks. You know, it's for people that don't even take ski lessons that want to change their skiing technique dramatically. So it's been going really well. You know, even since we started the tour this year, we're working our way around the UK. We started at the beginning of October and we're hitting on sort of almost 500 people at the moment that we've scored. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. even the show here has been crazy. You know, yeah. that we've been so busy after the talk where we've got a good room of people. And then, you know, the stand's got 40 people staying outside it for about three hours. It's, it's, it's pretty good. So we're getting through the numbers. But what's really interesting is nearly all the ski in public in the UK is showing about a 30 or 40 degree difference between their left and right turn, even before yeah. they put skis on. So your message really is to, to, to skiers, like understand your physiology, yeah. right? Before you go skiing, you get a set of exercises to do, to improve that in, in several different ways, yeah. right? For several different areas of your body. Yeah, absolutely. I, and there's a classic one is like, you know, you say to people, you try and get them to visualize you know, you, you can make your calf turns all very nice and cool on peace and it feels quite confident. And so when you go up into that steep and narrow environment, that your weaker turn direction shows itself a bit more. And mm -hmm. if you go really steep, it's like it actually becomes a bit like that if you're on your wrong side or wrong standing yeah. side. Every time we asked a question in front of an audience, like yesterday, there was a few hundred people out there and we said, you know, does anyone got a weaker turn? Like everyone's hands up straight away. Sure. So what this is showing is like when people try and step their feet around to the right, let's say they score 70 degrees, yeah. usually when they step around the other direction, it's like there's a block and they get to about right. 30 or 40 degrees. It means that they'll hip rotate on that one side. So we're just giving them really basic exercises. Inner leg steering is basically what it is. We don't do it in our day-to-day -day life. Yet when you it's clip... It's not something you do when you walk down the street. Exactly, yeah. But when yeah. you clip your skis on on a Sunday morning, right and wait till Friday afternoon, you expect you're going to do it. You've never even rehearsed it. So let alone, you know, so, so we, we get it's some really good impossible. results. Yeah. And most people, let's face it, most people go skiing for one or two weeks a year. Yeah, exactly. They turn up, yeah. they can do it. Yeah. Technique wise, they, they understand some of the technique or a lot of the technique. Yeah. But actually physiology, the physiology is holding them back. Well, this is, rotation is so important. Oh my God, it's the massive. You know, really leg, leg rotation. So just trying to get that ball to rotate inside the socket joint in the hip. I mean, we're trying to champion this within the snow. We, you know, we're writing the technique for on the website, but we're launching yep. the new clips which we just shot here actually this summer, but the, on the, on the, the yeah, on the glacier and, yeah. and, it, and it's actually really interesting. So what's been really nice is to, especially when you've got a, a platform like a, a magazine or a website, it, there's a lot of readers, there's a lot of people that are enthusiastic, um, but the show's interesting for us. It's a slightly different thing where it's a much more of a mainstream mm. viewer audience and, and it's still picking up the same response. And you go all around the country for this tour, right? Yeah. I mean, like, you've been to Aberdeen, and yeah. You know, Inverness, um, all the way from yeah, Inverness, yeah. all the way down to what the Bristol, south, yeah, Bristol, Bristol, yeah, Bristol, yeah. And you've been doing that in October. You do that every year. Yeah, we and do. I mean, it's a big opportunity for people to come and actually just test themselves, see where they are physiologically. Yeah, and yeah. then get some exercises. But the, the good thing so, is, that doing it in October it gives people that, that classic three-week window yeah. for physio. You know, doing stretches, doing stability exercises, mobility exercises. It gives them that window. You can't do it in a five, three or four day window. You no, know? No, so sure. if you get three weeks, yeah, you need. To, yeah, and, and what people are doing is they're usually doing the tests, sending in the scores on day one, and then revisiting us in three weeks. Okay. And then the results, we're already starting to see the results in the first part. They're, they're oh. massive. Oh. Right? Yeah. People are nailing the exact range, like seventy degrees, seventy degrees in both directions. So it's. And it's if not, you want to ski moguls, right? I mean, you can yeah. have all the technique in the world, but you're if you a, cannot, if you cannot rotate, well, you're a mogul skier. I mean, I remember seeing you in competitions in Verbia, and, and it's exactly the same. You, you can't ski a zip line mm. if you can only steer to there because you're going to be going a thousand miles an hour before you've got halfway down the course. So this is it. I mean, we carve and we skid in moguls. You know, we do a bit of both, yeah. and this this rotation is like is so important for people. Great. So. Last winter, you were lucky enough to be find. Well, we were so lucky. You were in yeah. finding yourselves in Switzerland yeah. uh, that actually just 
I mean, obviously it wasn't operating completely normally because restaurants weren't open normally and, yeah. and that sort of thing. It was very different. But the lifts were open. The lifts were open. I mean, the way that the, the Swiss were obviously linking it to their um, railways and their, their, their cableway sort of system. And, you know, if the trains are running, so are the lift cables in, in the ski resort, which right. was amazing for us. So from our point of view, we went through our process of a winter season. We were limited. So, you know, I think the Brits were blocked from coming into Switzerland from December mm -hmm. the 18th or 19th, something right. like that. Yeah. So we lost most of our season's bookings. But... Weirdly, you know, a, a few people that sort of made the call to say, actually, I'm staying here, yep. stayed. Once they were in, they stayed. They so stayed in Verbier for the season. They stayed in Verbier. And, right. and they, they, you know, interestingly, we already had courses set up, like the master's course. It was a bit like an instructor course, but without the exams. Okay. So they came and skied on the master's course for five weeks, like a staycation style course. We had the instructor courses running anyway. Um, mm -hmm. We worked with the Swiss embassy to get the Lassier Passé documents. We got okay. people in to do that. Yeah. Um, it trickled, you know, we just about survived. I think if, from a financial point of view, we would have been better off if they shut the lifts and we were all on the furlough. But, <laughs> right, okay. but we got to ski, you know, which is like sure. pretty epic, you know. So I got more yeah. free ski days than I normally would do. Amazing. Yeah, it was good I mean, not, not great. But not great, but then it's not always monetary. Sometimes it's just great to get out there and enjoy the powder, you know. Yeah, so it's good. So to have that on your doorstep and yeah. to be able to do we that in so that lucky. time. Is, so lucky. Yeah. I mean, we're speaking to friends in Austria and Chamonix, you know, just over borders and... You know, they, they were blocked and, and mm -hmm. going to be fined three grand if they'd have put their skis on and gone ski touring in some places, yeah, sure. you know. So it's pretty scary. And this winter, how's it looking? This winter's good. I mean, we've yeah. got some weeks are already sold out, you know. Right, so so right. going even into our November courses, which are technically pre-winter courses, um, and numbers are high, the hotels are already full, and some of them are sold out. Um, mm -hmm. We're trying to put on extra courses. It's slightly tricky because obviously the Swiss have got this system where they're not giving out the L permit to British people because right. of the Brexit uh, issues. Yeah. Um, our team is okay. It's still our sort of solid team, but it's because not been, you, because you've got work permits in place or because you've got EU we, passport we got holders. Work, or, yeah, you know, some of it's a because of things. mix of that. So some okay. of it's because of EU passport holders. Some of it's because people have got an extension on what they call the L permit. Right. You know, by coming back yeah. out and they've they've extended it through. Okay. Hopefully by next season, the following season, it'll be okay. Uh, and we're just going to tread carefully because whatever week we run, we've got the knowledge that. Some of the people are booking on this course and paying for it, and actually some of the people are on credits. So we've just got to tread really of carefully. Course. But to be honest with you, all of it, you know, we we feel lucky, we feel blessed that we're sort of still doing it and having that opportunity. So it's uh, we're we're super excited. I mean, it would be you know Switzerland obviously isn't in the EU, but they are they are sort of linked to the EU in terms of their work permits and yeah. the right to work within within the EU. Uh, exactly. State. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're in the Schengen and they they play ball, I guess, with Europe. They've got their bilateral agreements. And yeah. They haven't quite worked that out with the UK yet. I'm sure they will by the fall. That's what needs season. to happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. Hopefully, we can go and work in Switzerland yeah. um, freely in the, in the future. That, that would be good. That would Swiss be good. people, please, just sort <laughs> yeah. it out, right? Yeah, they will, they'll get there, um, I'm sure. Yeah, okay. And, and Verbier, I mean, you've been in Verbier how long now? I, mean, oh, I don't like to say now. Oh, it's just getting beyond that. Yeah. We won't talk about that. Yeah, we won't talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I've known Rob for many days in many bars when we were in our, when our, in our youth, eh? Yeah, I mean, we did the bars. We did the bars. We definitely did that. We did that. And we... there's a few of them in Verbier as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think 94 we, we got to Verbier yeah. a long time ago. Um, mm. And, you know, I, I still I still have the same buzz in the morning of going to Medran. I look at what's going to happen. It's that massive playground where you've yeah, just sure. got so many options on your doorstep to mm. go and enjoy your day. And obviously, you know, you've got the Bruce on the side of Verbier and mm -hmm. other areas, the smaller little areas and the pockets that we... We go and find, but yeah, I mean, I still have so much love for Verbier. So. Yeah, it's changed a bit, hasn't it? It's changed a lot, actually. Yeah, it's changed a lot. I mean, there's yeah. different types of dynamics going on in Verbier now. Right. So you, you've still got your, you know, your traditional ski bums that are skiing there, and people that are searching that sort of love, you know, lovely power in, okay. in their own sort of way. Yeah. A bit of soulful skiing. You've got people there commercially looking at their holidays, and you've got the W Hotel for a different type of clientele, sure. and it's just evolved, you know, in, in a way. But it's it's got a lot of different. Um, Areas, but the so mountain is still the same, right? The mountain's not changed. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's still the same as it was. It's still the same. Yeah, we still get up and ski those amazing, as you know, you know, the stairway runs and yeah. the back of Mont Four and, and lots of other secret spots that people yeah, sure. you know we don't mention on, on the interviews. Don't well, we won't talk about those places, right? Unless yeah. you unless you go skiing with you and you might show them. Yeah, maybe. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, yes, yeah. and you know, you you're quite you're well known. Ryan as a ski instructor, you know, you, you've got a, a, a great reputation, a great name out there, and you also ski with some pretty well-known people as well. Are they still coming out to uh, ski with you this winter? Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we've got a few people, you know, the classic sort of, you know, 
guys we've skied with before, like at the Lawrence Delalio, for example. He's a big fan. Very, yeah, he's a big fan of what we do. Yeah. He, he likes how we coach. Kind of is very similar, he says, to how he was coached. Um, so he'll be back out and, and looking at it. Many of these people that skied with us, they haven't skied for like over two years. So, so the introduction back into it, it's not just going to be like just chuck skis on, let's go. Everybody's like missed those like those really sort of intrinsic ski muscles. Sure. And, and we're sort of going to be playing it certainly on day one with a lot of people quite safe. You know, I might have to come on one of your courses oh, mate, at the absolutely. beginning of the season. We should come and teach us. Yeah, get your, well, that's get your instructor like, stripes back out. You yeah, know? yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and any other places, any other destinations that you might be going to this winter? Because you do, you know, yeah, like we've Japan, got a, yeah, Italy, exactly. and all that kind of stuff. So, so that was a really good, a good question actually. We will go to Chavinia, like we start there in yep. a week, week and a half, or two weeks, effectively two weeks today. Um, but we we normally go to Japan every February, end of January, start of February, yeah, yeah. for a two week window, and you know we run two different separate weeks there. We get a big number for Japan, but we took the decision. Um, I think it was a lot to do with the vaccine rollout. When mm -hmm. we we were working with our uh, ski safari, the partner that we were doing, the, yep. the, they just said, "Look, you're better off just leaving it for 2022. Yeah. Let's put the dates out for 2023." Okay. So we're about to launch 2023 dates, okay. and the amount of interest is, is huge. But but for this year, we've just played it safe. We're staying local, we're staying in Verbier mm. and you know, just getting it done and, and making like a, a, a bit more of a solid, safe season. What, you know, what do you love about being a ski instructor? Because you, you are, you know, you work hard, right? You, yeah, you're out yeah, there, like, yeah, yeah. you're out there teaching. I mean, you know, you're, yeah. not, you're not kind of like hanging out uh, in the uh, offshore cafe all day and uh, sipping coffee. You're out there teaching people. Yeah, it's full on. I mean, it yeah. is full on. But I, in a way, it keeps us fit. So it keeps us sort of, you know, um, sure. and, and it's a good buzz. So, so with the team, you know, part of it is like scheme of people that are interested, you know, they, they like the job and it's not random stuff. So we, we're not a ski school on the street where they get last minute lessons. Yeah. People book with us about four to six months in advance. Yeah. And a lot of them are repeat regular clients. Um, but there's a sort of camaraderie inside the academy team. So if we meet in the morning for a coffee, it's like you're seeing all your buddies. It's like, you know, it's your team. And then you get your day off and you go and ski together. You look forward to those moments. Um, so there, there's a lot of that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's Which pretty, is really nice. Yeah, it's, and, and the funny thing is with COVID, even that, like even trying to work together as a team, was quite restricted because, as you said, like sure. last season, we couldn't go out anywhere socially. Everything was shut, and you couldn't even on the mountain. There was no places to go inside. You know, and it was pretty strict. And do you have a do you have like a certain type of person you would say that fits in with the Ron Smithsky Academy kind of ethos as an instructor, or is it? Yeah, I mean the instructor team, you know, the coaching team are great. You know, they're people that look a, a little bit wider than just a typical ski instructor sort of way it works. We yeah, look a right. lot about the biomechanics. Mm -hmm. A lot of our guys are also trained, you know, to to look closer at equipment. So from that side, the coaching is t it's a it's a much greater depth, you could say, of someone that's looking to get into that instruction world. Mm -hmm. um, and from the client side of it, I mean, they're typically people that want to get off piste, they either already are, they struggle yep. with some aspects of technique, or, or they want that sort of bridge sort of created for them, so they can go from on-piste skiing to off-piste. Okay. And, and like we said in the audience today at the show, you know, you, you ask that question, like, who skis comfortably, you know, on piece but struggles when you get into powder, and nearly everyone in the room, a few hundred people put their hand up. And it is that classic thing, that the mm. few of these things that are actually built into the ski technique lab always make those fixes for people. So that's our, our main client, is people that can ski off-piste, or are desperate to get off piste. And off piste then in Verbia, what's your, you don't have to give away any secrets. Yeah. Uh, what's your fame, your uh, favorite, favorite run? Favorite I mean, run. I mean, it's a silly, you yeah. probably get asked that all the time. We, are, but, we ask, yeah. I mean, do you know what, one of the things about Verbia is you can access pretty good skiing quite quickly off the lift. You yeah, don't sure. have to go walking too far for it. So we're quite lucky. We've got Creble, we've got Colnamine, and they're so easy to get to. We've got Valen Darby, you ski straight yeah. to it. Got a lovely sort of Montgelé, which is actually on the front face, it's pretty extreme, you know, for a lot yes. of clients. Yeah, sure. And off the back of it, you're looking at all the bowls. And, and over the far side, Stairway to Heaven, um, Highway. Highway, you know, you yeah. literally just ski in, ski out, it's crazy. Yeah, sure. And you get the most incredible um, pitches in there. So True. so we're lucky. I mean, if we go skiing ourselves, we usually just jump on the back of Mont 4, and there's a lot of the different adventures up there as well. So okay. it's endless, you know, it really is. And I think, hopefully, if I don't make it to Verbier this season, we might see each other at City Ski Championships in Cron Montana. Which my diary. So it, yeah. you're involved with that yeah. in, as well, potentially. Yeah, we work. I mean, Amin, Amin's a great guy. He does yeah. such a great job with the City Ski. Uh, he brings a big atmosphere. He brings a big chunk of the city out to the Alps. So wherever he takes it, 
is, is a really good thing for the resort they go to. Yeah. And we go there, we do a little bit of coaching. Um, we work really closely with Knight Frank, one of the one of the, the, the guys who, who sort of help fund the event as well. Um, so we'll go over there. Um, and also Crown Montana is great. You know, it's one of those resorts where you've just got incredible pistes mm. and, you know, you can ski back to the resort and it's, it's good atmosphere. So I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, I'll, I'll be over there. And then, we, and then we do work with, you know, my patron for Snow Camp. Yep. They're going out there. We're going to so stay on and do that. Charity one. marathon yeah, weekend. Yeah, exactly. Snow Camp. Yeah. And have you got anywhere on your to do, you know, to go list that you've never been before that is a wish list destination for you that you'd like to either go skiing yourself or take clients to? Do you know what's interesting? Actually, I haven't skied it, but Andermatt, which has always oh, yeah. always been on the like the, mm. the cards, Andermatt's okay. a place we want to go to. All right. Um, we've got a, an opportunity right. to go to. Um, mm -hmm. One of the, a colleague of ours. Rob Sawyer used to run the Faraday and Verbier has just yep. acquired a, a hotel in Andaman okay. and is starting to create a bit of a scene there and we're now going to be opening as our next destination our academy in Andaman and you know Andaman's famous for it's like microclimate it's crazy sure. you drive through the tunnel and you jump on that sort of tunnel train and you Mountain. come out the other side and there's an extra couple of meters of snow on the other side mm -hmm. of that weather system so we're, we're going to be doing stuff in Andaman and, and I'm really excited because I've not done much skiing there okay. um, and there's so much to do and it's like it's crazy it all comes down yeah. into the resort you look at it yeah. it's like wow big know. mountain big mountain yeah and, and some really serious skiers there so yeah, you know, we're, we're excited about that and it's a cool town as well isn't and it's, it? it's yeah got it's a proper got old swiss town old swiss like, ex-military town yeah yeah you can still see that with the helicopters flying around and, and yeah. it's got the james bond thing there from you know from goldfinger so it's okay. quite, quite fun all right and further afield i mean what you know Further, Chile. further afield, you know, we've done our sort of skiing in Chile. We were going to go back there. Um, you know, with all the things going on at the moment, we're sort yeah. of we're thinking really carefully about how we move forwards with the business. We do, mm -hmm. you know, we, we, we're ambassadors to protect our winter. So now we're trying to work on a lot more ski touring aspects to what we do as products. Yep. Um, a lot of people are booking us privately to go touring anyway. And I think one of our future courses, whereas it might have been a Henny ski camp somewhere, is probably going to be more of, of a ski touring aspect. Well, okay. you can still open up so much in the mountain and, sure. and get to visit great new places. So um, we'll see what... More what people of, ski touring and getting used to that. Yeah, and getting, so and, and seeing the benefits. Yeah, so much. I mean, you know, if you think about it, a crossover with skiing is cycling, right? And loads sure. of our, our clients are road cyclists. Yeah. They've all got their carbon bikes, they all yeah. love that thing. They, sure. So they've got that sort of strength. And when they put skins on it, it really relates to them to like just get on that bike and they get that exercise. Yeah, sure. And if you think about it, play hard, work hard sort of ethos. Mm -hmm. um, if you've gone on a ski tour to go and get to that, and that's the beauty, you get to that extra little bit where other people didn't go to off the lift access. Yeah. Uh, you've got great powder, you've got a great bit of exercise, you feel like you can really enjoy yourself and go and have that fondue at night and not sort of feel guilty about it, you know. So if you've got any one tip or one or two tips for any skier yeah. out there that wants to get into off-piece, they're, they're maybe they've skied quite a lot, they're good skiers yeah. or, or reasonably good skiers, yeah. on piste, confident. Yeah, yeah. But they want to take that step into the off-piste environment. I mean, I know obviously we're talking about snow conditions that can be completely varied, yeah, 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 you know, yeah. from powder to to all sorts of snow conditions, yep. but what would be your number one tip? Number one that? tip is definitely going to be to do how people work their ankle flex. So you can see okay. it on that sort of thing. It's, it's the yep. test we've been doing at the show. Most people don't have adequate range in their lower joint of the ankle. Most people feel that the ski boot is a little bit alien to them. Mm -hmm. and, and we just get them to do driving exercises at home with their ski boot on and try to increase the length of the calf. Most people in powder, when you look at them in it, they, they go back seat. That's just a really simple thing, you know, so ankle flex and, and getting a, a lot more muscle memory in the ankle joint is a huge thing for being more successful in powder. And the other thing is this is what we've been doing, the lateral control test. You know, nearly everyone you see skiing usually skis in some form of an A-frame. Yeah. And in powder, the A-frame is like the acid test. You dip someone in powder, the skis are submerged, there's no room for correction. You know, right. that you're going to go where the powder dictates. Yeah, sure. And if they're at slightly different angles in that A-frame, the symmetry is everything. I'm in trouble. They're having trouble. So, right. so the 10 second test, the lateral control, yeah. you know, it's on, it's on in the snows website. People can access that information. You can do this stuff at home. You know, it's really easy at home exercises. So that's the message, you know, get training at yeah. home. It's simple. It's not that difficult. It's free. It's free. It's charge. free. Yeah. And then when they come out to ski with you and your, your team, you can have a lot of fun. Oh, you have fun. Yeah. yeah we, you about, you right? unlock it and you have a lot We're of fun. We're in the mountains. Absolutely. Ski. Have a good time. Absolutely, mate. I think yeah. there was a song that went like that. Something like that. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Good to see you, mate. Yeah, you too. Awesome. Um, we'll catch up Definitely. on the snow this winter for sure. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thank you.